Oh, ladies and gentlemen, Brie Larson, Captain Marvel, is actually chosen as the least powerful Avenger, and the uh, Avengers Endgame director reacts. It's This is funny. Genuinely funny. Fans don't think that Brie Larson, Captain Marvel, is the most powerful character in the MCU. Is it going to be Trolls? Who's going to be the ones doing it today? Now, this is the Avengers Endgame director Anthony Russo react to the news. If you recall, Marvel Studios president Kevin Feige took a page out of Disney's Pinocchio prior to the release of the Captain Marvel movie, offering that Carol Danvers is the most powerful character in the MCU, meaning more powerful than Thanos, Hulk, Doctor Strange, Thor, Scarlet Witch, and everybody else. Even though there's been some other comments now recently about whether she actually is or not. There are some comments like Scarlet Witch could destroy Thanos as well. By herself, I, they really don't understand, do they? In terms of, like, they can't make their minds up. So apparently, this is Kevin Feige's words anyway. She's one of the most popular characters in our comics. No, she's not. No, <laughs> she's not. She's one of the most. You keep rebooting her. She's one of the most powerful characters in the comics and will be the most powerful character in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. <laughs> She's one of the most powerful, one of the most popular characters in the comics. Is she? Please. Fe uh, Feige said, which everyone knows is a huge stretch of the truth as the comics don't sell and the character can hardly be compared or can be considered in the same league as the aforementioned Avengers and Marvel characters. Yeah, completely true. Regarding Anthony Russo, during a promo for the Avengers Endgame movie, directors Joe and Anthony Russo fielded questions on Twitter, which Wired recorded. One of the questions appeared happened to be a poll asking who is the most powerful of the Avengers. Well, Brie Larson, as Captain Marvel, received the least votes with only 6% which saw Anthony Russo react to and frown. Check it out. <laughs> Apparently the the, um, the kid, kid from Iron Man 3, scored 52%. Oh, god damn, it's so funny. <sighs> Release Klaus mixtape. Alright, let's settle this once and for all. Who is the most powerful Avenger? Scarlet Witch. It's good to see Scarlet Witch getting some love. Thor, nice. Captain Marvel, 6%. Hilarious. Look, I mean, look, inevitably people will just go, oh, it's all trolling and blah, blah, blah. But I do find this funny. This is it's just a, a, a funny little jab. Um, funny to see his reaction to it as well. Look at that face. Look at the face. Oh, he doesn't look best impressed, does he? Like I say, they keep... Like toing and froing on who is actually the the most powerful and how they've done stuff. Because like there were some comments to say that, like I say, there were some comments to say that Scarlet Witch was the most powerful. But now Kevin Feige, it's a huge stretch of the truth saying she's one of the most popular characters in our comics. She's one of the most powerful characters in the comics, and she will be the most powerful character in the MCU. Such a huge stretch. Um, and even if she was. She kind of didn't really do anything. Didn't do anything at all. Because she buggered off to space. And then when she came back. Didn't have anyone. She's She was essentially. Uh, like relegated. For the movie. Apparently chosen to actually. Apparently it was chosen. That we would kind of have her. Out of the movie for a little bit. And then we get articles like this. Which I think is hilarious. Why Captain Marvel's Avengers Endgame screen time is so frustratingly limited. <sighs> Let's get into it. With she's now a major part of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Captain Marvel's screen time in Avengers Endgame is both amazing and also a little disappointing. While Carol Danvers is prominently featured in every single poster for the movie and gets a fair share amount of screen time in every release trailer. Her involvement in the greater story is minimal. Yes, she has some major things to do to set the story in motion, but if you think Captain Marvel just hangs out at Avengers headquarters eating bread with Thor, think again. 
She's the most powerful Avenger and also the newest Avenger. So where was Captain Marvel during Avengers Endgame? These apologists. Where was she? Not in it, for good reason. Captain Marvel shows up at the very beginning of the movie to do a very important thing, save Tony Stark from space. Uh, while it's never outright explained, we're led to believe that the end credit scene from Captain Marvel is what brings her to HQ in the first place, as her first introduction to everyone, and from there, she heads into space before the events of Endgame even begin. Because she is strong and mighty, she literally flies the broken spaceship down to Earth with her bare hands, and then travels with everyone else to defeat Thanos uh, on his garden planet. What was it called? Eden, wasn't it, I think? Uh, they do... No, it wasn't called Eden. I don't know, Farm or something? I can't remember. Uh, they do, but things are still pretty bad. And the group goes their separate ways, including Captain Marvel. Which is amazing, because when she when she buggers off to space, she doesn't get anyone to help her. Doesn't why, did, why didn't she get anyone to help her? And this is what makes the story start to fall apart. Captain Marvel spends the entirety of the movie in space helping other planets. There's clearly going to be uh, people she could have interacted with in space, uh, lots of people she could have brought in, and she chose not to. Why? Why did? Why was it written like that? Because it, it just doesn't make sense. Now it says, we later see Carol Danvers with a new haircut via hologram, talking to Black Widow about her continuing work with the Avengers, but then she heads back into space. She eventually shows back up during what is literally the third act of the third act of the movie and does her signature, I'm going to fly through this spaceship and destroy it move, before joining the rest of the heroes in their fight. But something like two hours has passed in between her appearances. It's not a stretch to wonder where was she the entire time. Here are a few likely reasons she was otherwise engaged. Let's see the apologies, shall we? She's with the scrolls. I'm not even going to get into the... Ah, oh, it's fine. At the end of the Captain Marvel, our heroes head off to to help the Skrulls find a new home planet after the Kree destroyed theirs. Hopefully, over the last 30-ish years, she managed to help them. Blah, blah. Well, you'd imagine so, wouldn't you? Uh, there were a lot of other planets that needed help after Thanos destroyed them. Carol makes this comment towards the beginning of the movie when she's questioned as to where she's been. Thanos doesn't just destroy half the population on Earth, but takes the Infinity Stones everywhere. Uh, in the galaxy too seeing as how she's well traveled through space it's going to it's carol's job to help other planets be affected by the mad time no one thought to ask her for help sorry what what she's well aware of the issues never once did any avenger go hey maybe we should call carol again on that pager that would have made things like time travel probably 200 percent easier why would she She's got she got no knowledge of time travel. Why would she be what? Why would she be called? What are you talking about? Avengers Endgame would have been 90 minutes if Captain Marvel were left in charge of the plot. Oh my god! We're getting to the real doozy of takes now. The joke all along was that Captain Marvel would be the one to defeat Thanos. If she had shown up during Infinity War, things would definitely be different. Because during Endgame, she's actually able to get the Infinity Gauntlet off his hand. That is mad impressive. The Avengers needed to struggle for a bit before calling in major reinforcements. Showing too much of Captain Marvel would have been a spoiler for her other movies. What? It's possible that there were more Captain Marvel scenes filmed that somehow didn't make the three-hour cut of the film. Maybe it was a conscious decision not to include them. Considering we're all just getting to know Captain Marvel, blah, blah, blah. Let... It's Captain Marvel apologists everywhere. This is hilarious. This especially is hilarious. All of this stuff. Uh, there you go. I thought I thought you guys would thought you guys would find this funny. Brie Larson, the least powerful Avenger. What do you think? Let me know down below. Where do you think she was, and why do you think no one called her? I think bad writing, but never mind. Anyway, let me know your thoughts down below in the comments. If you're new here, hit subscribe. Stay up to date on the world of pop culture and movie news by hitting the bell notification icon. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I have been Mr. H. Take care.